this guy is going to be this guy is going to be y1 okay <laughs> okay i'm not going to write it it's difficult to write it in simple so this 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 guy here can you see that these guys are actually e1 square plus e2 square plus uh, in this case e3 square and e4 square. so this is all forms only so this distance is e1 this is e1 e2 e3 and e4 okay so the error term in in, uh, in our particular case in our particular case, let's, let's compute the error then, okay? So let's compute the error term in this case. Um, the error term is going to be um, y minus this. So for us, for us will be y is what? y is one, two, three, three, minus, so this is the error. Okay, one, two, three, three minus x. Two, five, seven, eight times okay, times this ugly stuff. Okay, so that is the error term. That is the error vector. Okay, and then the magnitude of this error vector is going to give you the actual the sum of the sum of the, the square root of the sum of square of those error terms. Is, is it okay? I'm not going to compute this. Okay. But this is essentially what's happening. So this will be the error time. Or the error vector. It's called the error vector. Are we okay? Uh, if we are, we are going to generalize this. We are going to generalize this. Okay. So this time we are trying to fit a quadratic, not just fitting a line. So you, you are given a bunch of stuff. Okay. Maybe something like this. You are trying to get the best quadratic to it. Okay. Trying to get the best quadratic. And you can generalize it into cubics, into whatever. Okay, so in this case, equation will be y equal to beta zero plus beta one x plus beta two x squared. Okay, and then you will have the uh, predicted value here. The observed value here. So now you have a you have these points, right? You have this point x1, x x1, y1, and all the way to x n y n. These are from your observation. And then you try to fit this curve. So over here is beta zero plus beta one x one plus beta two x one square all the way down. And then here will be y1. And then will be beta zero plus beta one. Xn, beta two, xn square. This one will be yn. Write this in matrix form. You have a bunch of ones here, a 
bunch of ones. And the next one is going to be x1, x2, xn. What is this third column? This third column will be this column will be x1 squared, x1 squared, x2 squared, xn squared. And then you have beta 0, beta 1, beta 2. And then here you go to 2, 1, n. Okay. So this one is x. This one is beta. And this one is y. And you can go through the same thing. Okay. So you try to solve x beta and equal to y. Of course, the solution is inconsistent. You seldom have everything measured exactly on the quadratic. Even though if the relationship is quadratic, there will be measurement errors. And then so if you do the normal equation, the normal equation, which is x transpose x beta and equal to x transpose y, okay, and then you solve this for beta n. And that will give you the best fit. Put it back here. Is it okay? Of course you can do cubic. You can do cubic. You can do polynomial or some degree, any degree, right? So it's very powerful. Any questions so far? Now, you can even do the following. Uh, Multiple regression. Now, multiple regression is going to look like this. Multiple regression means that you will have an independent variable. Uh, you will have uh, okay two independent variables. You and me. Okay, so you have y. So this is basically like how could the three stuff. You have two inputs and one output. So <laughs> you want to do something like uh, so your model, your model. It's um, this thing called, I think it's called, gen, this is a generalized linear model. Uh, if you talk to the statistics guy, some of the data analysis guy, data analysis guy use this a lot. Okay, probably machine learning, similar thing. Generalized linear model is uh, general. Let me just write that. Generalize linear model. Okay. So you just assume that your y is equal to beta zero plus beta one u plus beta two v squared. Uh, sorry, v. I mean, even if you can change for some of these to u squares and so on, doesn't really matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. It still can be, I mean, if you want to be, this depends on it. So on you, you have to square two, then you just have more terms. Okay, so in this case, your, your uh, predicted value, predicted value, okay. Now you are gonna have this, you're gonna have a bunch of stuff, which is U1, U2, Y, uh, sorry, U1, V1, Y1, uh, U2, 
V2, Y2. So these are your measurements, right? These are, these are the observations. These are the observations. Okay, so predicted value and observed value for the output. Okay, so these guys are gonna be Y1, Y2, Yn. So this guy will be beta zero plus beta one, uh, U1 plus beta two, V1. You got my idea. So this one is beta zero plus beta one, U n beta two V n. So your matrix equation is going to be your matrix equation is going to look like this. A bunch of ones. And then this one will be U1, U2, U n, V1, V2, V n. Multiply this whole thing by beta zero, beta one, beta two, equal to y one, y two. Is it okay? I mean, in the homework, there will be some examples where you need to actually plug in actual numbers, but the general theory is the same. And it's very really powerful. It's really powerful, okay? So for example, I have seen examples where uh, this Y vector is the productivity. You look at a bunch of employees, look at a bunch of employees. Let's say you have an organization, okay? You want to see what makes a good employee. So you can have different factors. This is Y will be the pro productivity. This U maybe is how much education, V is how much experience. And then you can actually tell by feeding the model that does how much of the performance depends on education, how much of it depends on experience. You can have other factors. Would like, that give you? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, right. didn't mean to interrupt. All Are right, you... would that give you like two lines? No, this is not two lines. This is, oh, this is a plane. This is actually a plane. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? You have a bunch of form, you're feeding a plane on it. That's the equation of a plane. Is it okay? But you can have more variables, not just you and me. As I say, you can have experience. You can have experience. Uh, uh, what else? not the I use uh, ex experience education level uh, the third one can be how outgoing the person is okay degree of uh, intro whether it's introvert or extrovert okay you can have like how tall is the guy how good looking is the guy I don't know I mean you can <laughs> you can have different variables so you have a lot of variables okay then you can then you are feeding a so this is feeding a two-dimensional plane, right? Then you can feel a very high dimensional plane on it. So that's why when we say that it's difficult to imagine what, how we are going to deal with like 10 dimensions. I mean, it's easy that we have real life example of 10 dimensions. You just have 10 different attributes of a person, of an employee, okay? Then we are talking about doing it in the 11 dimensional space because the productivity depends on all those 10 attribute of the employee, okay? So would your B values, like if B1 was greater than B2, does that mean like U1 would- That, that factor, factor is more important. That factor is more important. Okay. So if this one is education, this one is experience, and if this guy is a lot bigger than the other guy, so education is more important, or vice versa. It depends on what your B, what these coefficients turn out to be. So when people say that, oh, it's, I can't even imagine four dimensions. Why are you talking about 10 dimensions and 20 dimensions? Are they useful? 
I mean, this is an example where they, they actually use it. Okay, we want to measure something based on like a bunch of different attributes, very characteristics. Okay, and that will be a way to, I mean, they actually do things like that. Okay, they actually will do things like that. Uh, maybe, maybe a company will say, Productivity employees, I mean, how does it depends on how much, how much perks we give them? Whether we give them dinner or lunch and so on. Maybe giving dinner is much more important than giving lunch. I mean, they, they measure, you can measure a lot of stuff. Quantify. Okay. So I didn't do a lot of example, but hopefully you guys understand what this is going, right? Do you need a concrete example for this? I can get one from the book if you want it. But it's similar to the one that I do for the straight line. It's just generalized. Okay, I'm gonna go to chapter seven. We have two sections to cover in chapter seven. So any question on this guys? I know you guys all want to be engaged, otherwise we wouldn't have call in. So, okay, good. Okay, so we are doing chapter seven. Okay, symmetric matrices. Uh, you guys understand what I mean, right? Uh, a is symmetric. Means, uh, okay, A is, uh, has to be an N by square matrix. Okay, uh, N by N matrix. A symmetric means, uh, a transpose is the same as A. All right. You guys understand what is symmetric? Is this, is this symmetric? Is this guy symmetric? One, two, three, four. No, that's good. It's not symmetric. Not symmetric. This one will be symmetric. Okay. okay. So here's a theorem that uh, I'm not going to prove. I'm not able to prove because we don't have haven't learned enough. Uh, okay. Okay. I, I'm going to do a. I'm to do going to do an easier theorem first. I'm going to do an easier theorem, and this one we can actually prove. Okay. A is N by N. Okay.
Uh, do you guys remember eigenspaces? Hopefully you remember eigenspaces. Eigenspaces are the, consists of the eigenvectors, okay? For a certain eigenvalue, okay? For certain eigenvalue. So let's say lambda equal to one, two, two. So this one will be, you have E1, E2, okay? So this E1 is correspond to the eigenspace of one, E2 is for the eigenspace of two. You guys remember something like this? I'll, I'll make it more general. Then you have E5, uh, E5 corresponding to the eigens. So this guy, you remember the dimension, this guy, the dimension is going to be one. Okay, this dimension of E, the dimension of E1 is one. Dimension of E2 is going to be less than or equal to two, right? Dimension of E5 is less than equal to three. You remember that? Because the algebraic multiplicity, algebraic multiplicity is equal to one. Okay, and this guy is equal to two, and this guy is equal to three. Is it okay? We also have the result that the geometric multiplicity is always less than or equal to multiplicity. You, you, you probably remember that. We have problems like this in the first test. Okay, so we are saying that as long as they belong to different eigenspace, that means with different eigenvalues, then they are actually orthogonal, not just independent. Okay, we have results like that before. Eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are going to be linearly independent. But for symmetric matrix, it's even nicer. For symmetric matrix, it's even nicer than that. So we actually know that they are orthogonal. Okay, so uh, I actually, we can prove it if you want, but maybe you guys can tell me that, is it okay for me to skip the proof and keep going? Or you want to see the proof? It's not too long to prove, it's up to you. Can we see the proof? Okay, so you see the proof. So the eigenvectors, so the eigen two, the two different, these two different eigenvectors. These two <coughs> eigenvectors, we are going to call them V1 and V2. Okay. Now I need to spot I need to show. I need to show V1 dot V2 is equal to zero. I want to show that they are perpendicular. That means V1 dot V2 equal to zero. Okay, so I'm gonna consider this guy. I'm gonna consider V1 dot V2. Now, I'm gonna multiply by lambda one. <coughs> the eigenvalues, lambda one, lambda two, are the corresponding Okay. And then multiply this V1 dot V2 multiplied by lambda 1 is going to be equal to lambda 1 V1 dot V2. I'm just doing this scaling thing. Now, but this guy, what is lambda 1 V1? Lambda 1 V1 it's going to be equal to A times V1. Do you guys follow that? Because A times V1 is lambda 1 V1. It's the definition of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Now, now I have these two vectors dot together. These are two, both of these are columns. I have two columns dotted together. I can actually rewrite this as a matrix multiplication. 
the matrix multiplication will be this guy. You need to transpose this to turn this column into a row. Okay, so this step is turning the column into a row. And then you multiply by. Now there's no dot anymore because it's like a row vector as a matrix multiplied by a column vector. And then this guy is going to be uh, A, B transpose is equal to B transpose, A transpose. It's the property of matrix. So I'm going to swap this. But A transpose, now here's a key step. Because A is symmetric, A transpose is exactly the same as A. Okay, it's exactly the same as A. So what do I have now? I have B1 transpose. A, B2, A times B2, the matrix times B2 is lambda to B2, okay? So this lambda 2 is a constant now, take it to the front, which is equal to lambda 2, V1, dot V2, okay? So what do we have? This thing equal to that thing. So what I have succeeded to show is that lambda 1, v1, dot v2 is equal to lambda 2, v1, dot v2. So you put this to the other side, lambda 1 minus lambda 2. Minus v1, dot v2. Zero. And because these two are not the same, this one is not zero. This one is not zero. So you can divide by that. Okay. Something not zero multiplied by this equal to zero. So V1 not V2 is equal to zero. Okay, which means that the two vectors are perpendicular. Okay, so that's the proof. The main thing is that at this step, at this step, we use this A transpose and the say A transpose equal to A. So here is where we use the fact that A is symmetric. Allow us to play with this game. Okay. And end up swapping the lambda one with the become the lambda two. And lambda one, lambda two, not the same. So we can do the divide at the end. So the proof is a little bit, it's just pretty straightforward. It's a lot of writing, but the idea is just move these terms around, make use of the property of eigenvalue and eigenvectors. And the fact that A transpose equal to A. Any question on this? It really depends on what major you're going to be in. If you are going to take up the division in the algebra, you, I mean, this will be a, consider a very easy proof. That will, the, the instructor will probably expect you to be able to handle things like that when you do upper division in the algorithm. Okay. Are we okay? Now, next, I'm going to write down a theorem which I'm not going to prove because it's so involved. Okay, it's very involved. But the result is very useful. It basically highlights to you why symmetric matrix are so important. Okay. And a lot of matrices in the applications are symmetric because you remember last section, we start out with this, right? We start out with this. And then when we do the normal equation, we get this. We get this. And this guy is symmetric. 
x transpose x is symmetric. And this happened a lot, okay, in application of linear algebra, okay. Um, you end up with symmetric matrix pretty often, and they have really nice property, okay, which is this one. Uh, in other words, Uh, I need to make comments about this. I'll let you write down first. Now you remember diagonalizable, right? means that you have a matrix P, D, P inverse equal to the original matrix A. Oh, uh, and diagonal matrix, matrix D, okay. D is diagonal matrix. Now, that's diagonalizable. But this is saying something stronger. Usually, uh, usually this say, it's not saying orthogonal matrix, it's say invertible matrix, right? But actually you have an orthogonal matrix, okay? Not just an invertible matrix. Orthogonal matrix has some good properties. Orthogonal matrix, uh, so this P uh, because of this orthogonal, okay? Orthogonal means that uh, P has a bunch of vectors, a bunch of these vectors. Each of these vectors, all these vectors, they're perpendicular to each other. And also the length, the length of each of the column vectors one. Okay, that's the definition of orthogonal matrix. And when we talk about orthogonal matrix, we mention this, if this P, has that property. So what happened to P transpose times P? P transpose times P will be a bunch of these rows here times these columns. But these columns are, each pair of columns are orthogonal. So when you multiply this by any other column, this row by the other columns will give you zero. When this row multiply, this first row multiplied by first column will give you one because the length of this vector is one. So we will tell, say that this one is identity matrix. So P, T, P is identity. I went through this one. I said, okay. I did go through this one last time, a couple, maybe a week or two ago. Why is, so, it, that, huh? why is it the identity matrix not zero? Uh, but when you have the first row and first column, so this row is the same as this column. When you do the dot product, it's back basically taking the length of that vector. Oh, okay. Is that okay? The first row and the first column, and or the second row and second column, that gives you the diagonal entries, right? So those diagonal entries are all one. 
So the off diagonals is zero. So this has the property that this P inverse is the same as P transpose. Okay. Orthogonal matrix has this property. P transpose is P inverse. So here, instead of saying A equal to PD in P inverse, another way to say that is A is equal to PD, P transpose. You don't have there's no work need to be done in computing the inverse, just transpose it become the inverse. Is it okay? Now, some more comment. What is he saying here? This guy is, when he say diagonalizable, that means all the geometric multiplicity is equal to the algebraic multiplicity, right? You remember that? Do you guys remember? For example, in order for this particular example, you will have geometric multiplicity for two of two for this eigenvalue and geometric multiplicity of three for this eigenvalue. Then you will get enough vectors. Then you will actually have enough vectors to form your P. P is just a, you remember P is just, P is the columns. P, uh, the columns. Okay. So P is just putting all the eigenvectors together. Okay. Columns of P, of P, uh, eigenvectors. Okay, you just have to find enough eigenvectors so that they are all linearly independent. So what we need to do, all we need to do is to do an example. Okay, and uh, we will not have enough time to finish it today, probably not, but we will try. Okay, we will try. So any questions before I move forward? I'm going to give an example where actually orthogonally diagonalize a matrix. Okay. That theorem is very powerful, it's very strong. It says it say symmetric matrix are so nice. So symmetric matrix are diagonalizable, not just diagonalizable, orthogonally diagonalizable. That means that matrix P Formed by all the 